Womp. Who wants to see some 4.3 liter LV3 performance modifications? We've got a couple of camshafts and a custom intake. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Oldner, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we're talking about some other guy's stuff, most notably a 4.3 liter V6, the LV1, LV3, which is basically the V6 version of the Gen 5 LT V8. You know, the motor that replaced the LS motor. Now this little V6 is actually pretty impressive. It has a lot of stuff going for it. It has high compression, direct injection, high flow cylinder heads, a good intake manifold, and it's really good even right out of the box. But how do you make this thing even better? Today we're going to take a look at some testing run by the guys at Brian Chewy Racing for some different camshafts. So we've got a couple of different camshafts, even a custom intake manifold for the LV3 4.3 liter V6. How much power can we make? Let's check it out. Okay guys, let's jump in and take a look at our other guys, 4.3 liter V6. This one is an LV3 or LV1. Both the combinations for what we're doing here would make basically the same power. But if we take a look at this 4.3 liter, and we've run across this before back in the old days with the 4.3 liter V6, for in comparison to the small block Chevy, the 4.3 liter was basically just three quarters of that small block. As we see, this LV3 is not quite that because it has two bigger brothers in the V8. It has a 5.3 liter V8 and a 6.2 liter V8. And while it does share the same stroke with both of those, 3.622, it doesn't share the bore with either one of those. On the V6, it's 3.92 bore, which is neither the 3780 bore on the larger V8, the 5.3 liter, nor does it share the 4065 bore on the even larger 6.2 liter LT1 and L86 truck versions. So it has a unique bore, but shares the same stroke. It also obviously is a V6. So when you're multiplying this out, you only multiply it by six. We get a displacement of 4.3 liters, but it does have a lot of cool things going for it. It's 11 to one. It's direct injected. It has oil cooled pistons. It has variable cam timing. The cam that's in it is fairly small, but they make the most of it using VVT. It is a 500 492 lift a 193, 199 degree duration split and 113 degree lobe separation angle. The cylinder heads flow very well. They're essentially just like an L83 head, but <laughs> only only three holes on each cylinder head. It has a uh, uh, 1.8 rocker ratio. It has a 59cc combustion chamber. It runs a different valve angle than the previous LS stuff, 12.6 on the intake and 12.1 on the exhaust. The cylinder heads have a 193, 156 uh, valve sizing on them. The nice thing about a direct injected cylinder head, which this is, and they also run high pressure direct injection, injecting the fuel only when the motor, uh, right before the motor is going to use it, it helps do two things. One, it helps eliminate detonation because if the fuel isn't there early, there's no fuel actually there to detonate. And so if the fuel is injected right at the right time, then we get good fuel usage, meaning hopefully better fuel mileage, and we can make more power. We can run more static compression. This thing's running 11 to 1. But the other thing that a lot of people don't think Think about is one of the reasons that direct injection does so well is it's just flowing air essentially. The fuel has been injected right into the in the combustion chamber. The fuel is not in the intake manifold. It's actually in the cylinder head, and because it's in the cylinder head and being directly injected directly into the combustion chamber, it doesn't go through either the intake port or the cylinder head port. So those cylinder heads effectively flow more air because they're flowing just air and not additional fuel. So this is a pretty strong combination. So let's take. A look and see what happens when we run a stock LV3 on the engine dyno. The guys at Brian Tui Racing did this. We'll take a look at what happens when we run the stock camshaft and then we run upgrades on this little V6. And as we'll see, it's pretty impressive right off the bat. So run with a Haltech ECU and run uh, with running the variable cam timing and the drive by wire throttle body. This combination produced. A peak of 344 horsepower, 
peak torque was 372 foot pounds and this is run on e85 please remember this thing was rated at 285 horsepower and 305 foot pounds of torque so why is it making so much more well there are a number of reasons first of all it's actually rated much higher closer to 300 horsepower and 330 foot pounds when gm ma made this thing uh made the ability for this thing to run on both fuel. So on E85, the rated power output from GM is higher, but the bigger difference is the way that this thing is being tested. When GM rates their motors, they rate them at the flywheel, but they also rate them with all the accessories in place. They rate them with all of the air and factory air intake in place. They rate it with the complete exhaust, cats, cat back, everything in place. And then they rate it with the factory tune. And even on E85, the factory tune is still conservative enough that it's not making all the power that it could. So the combination here run with basically an open throttle body uh, into a, a giant sized cold air intake manifold. Uh, no accessories, an electric water pump headers, long tube headers, and then basically a free-flowing exhaust and an optimized tune. James at, uh, from James Short Tuning did all of that. So let's take a look at what happens when we run our first camshaft. So the first camshaft, excuse me, was a Truck Norris Jr., so the famous Truck Norris cam for the LS combinations. And I'm going to go ahead and put the specs up here for the Truck Norris cam. But this camshaft improved the power output to 378 horsepower. Peak torque, nice flat curve up in there on the, on the torque curve. 385 foot-pounds of torque. So this thing, and you can see it did, it gained power basically from the get-go from 2000 RPM all the way out. So now let's take a look at what happens when we run some even more aggressive cams and a custom intake from the guys at Brian Tooley Racing. Okay, we'll take a look at what happens when we run the LV3 on the engine dyno with the stock cam and then with the Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris Jr. cam for the little V6. Let's find out what happens when we step up to even more cam timing. And this one is the 220 cam. I'm going to move myself a little bit here. So again, we have our stock cam. 343, 344 horsepower, 372 foot-pounds or so. And here's what happened when we added the Brian Tilly Racing 220 cam. So if you're looking for, if somebody's looking to make 400 horsepower out of their 4.3 liter, it's just a camshaft away. So with this camshaft, the combination produced 401 horsepower and peak torque of 385 foot-pounds. You can see it's just carrying power much, much higher out in the RPM range. This thing wanted to keep going past the 6,000 RPM mark. You can see, though, it's important to take a look. Below 3,000 RPM, this bigger camshaft is going to lose out compared to the factory cam. In fact, I'm going to show you. This is a comparison I'm showing you here between the stock cam and the 220 cam. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the stock cam for a second. And we're going to bring up the Truck Norris cam so the guy's deciding between the smaller, slightly smaller Truck Norris cam, which we know added 35 horsepower, and this bigger cam, which we know added 58 horsepower, but you have to see which one you want. Where do I want my power production? In comparing the Truck Norris Jr. cam to the 220 cam, the Truck Norris Jr. cam made more power up to 4,800 RPM, and then the bigger cam made more power out past 6,000 RPM, uh, ostensibly all the way to 6,500 if you wanted to rev it that far. So the question becomes, where do you want your power production? Now, we saw the Truck Norris cam was better than the stock cam basically everywhere, so if you want to improve the power output everywhere and not sacrifice anything anywhere, that's a good choice. But if you're really looking to make big power, take a look at the uh, of this at this bigger 220 cam. Now let's take a look and see what happens if you want even more power. <laughs> if you're all about that top end, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this Truck Norris cam. Now let's take a look and see what happened when the guys from Brian Toy Racing added their own custom intake manifold. And we can take a look here. This basically is a Trinity intake manifold that they cut and modified. What they did was took the Trinity long runner intake manifold for the 5.3 liter. They cut the rear section of the plenum off and then cut off that one set of runners for the V8 and then brought the cap back forward, rewelded it, making it into taking basically a Trinity long runner intake manifold before an L83 and squinching it down and making it fit for a V6. And you can take a look. I'll show you some photos up here of what the what this intake manifold looked like. It looks fairly cool. And because it fits, I think, under the truck, under the hood of a truck, 
for the LA3, you should be able to fit this under the under the hood of a an LV3 Trek application as well. It's probably not going to fit, you know, a Camaro or Corvette or those kinds of things. But having a, a custom intake manifold. Now, the factory long runner intake manifold, as we see, makes pretty good power. In fact, all the way up to 52 or 5300 RPM. Actually, actually more than that. All the way up to 5700 RPM. The long runner stock LV3 intake manifold, the, um, the composite intake manifold, makes more power. But <laughs> if you're looking to make power out on the big end and you want to get up above 400 horsepower, this thing made 429 horsepower. In fact, right at 430 horsepower. So right at 100 horsepower per liter with that intake swap. You did drop torque though. Peak torque was down to 369 foot pounds of torque. Let's see. Yeah, 369 foot-pounds of torque. So again, it all comes down to camshafts, intake manifolds. It all comes down to trade-offs. Where do you want your power production? But it's pretty cool to see a 4.3 liter making 100 horsepower per liter. Now this makes me wonder what would happen if you did some porting on the cylinder head. Remember, your older, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More other guys testing coming up.